All right, folks. Hey, welcome to Health Second Opinion. Dr. Chad here again this week. Excited about another day of um, getting to really uh, help expand people's minds and help them reach their health potential. I'm blessed to have a very good friend of mine and colleague, uh, Dr. Dan Moss, with me today. How's it going, man? Good, Chad. How you doing? Doing great. And awesome. just uh, looking forward to us discussing a little bit about innate intelligence. Yeah. And, and, and really helping people understand just how big of a concept this is. And, you know, I know right now people are really struggling, a lot of people out there with a lot of fear and things and really like to bring a little hope. And so let's start it out. Let you tell me a little bit about, you know, what intelligent, innate intelligence means to you. So, you know, going coming from a medical background, thinking that I was going to medical school, I never thought twice about how the body healed. I thought it healed when you went to a doctor. It healed when you put a Band-Aid on it. It healed when you put Neosporin on a cut and never really gave credit to the power inside of us that's actually doing the work. You know, I often ask my patients, I mean, do you need to know how to heal a cut? The answer is no. Well, then who's doing it for you? And you start thinking about it. You're like, well, my body does it. Well, how does your body know how to do it? I don't know. Well, the good thing is you don't need to know. Yeah. All you need to know is that have faith and the fact that your body has the inborn, innate intelligence that God put inside of every single one of us that runs and controls every function in our body, including our body's ability to heal. And as long as there's no interference along those communication lines blocking that, we're going to be healthy. And that's our number one goal. That's it. You know, and I think that uh, a lot of people don't put to in perspective just what you're saying about you're not having to think about it and that. But just how big of a job that is, you know, there's some 70 trillion cells probably in the body. And that if you took all the DNA out of every cell, like six feet per cell, and you stretched it end to end and it it would go to Jupiter. And then in each side of those cells, every single one of those, there's like a hundred thousand organelles called mitochondria that are producing energy. And all of that is being controlled and coordinated and it's all happening in the background. And that's what our innate intelligence, it's that massive. It's that amazing that, you know, our whole body, uh, your blood is brand new every 120 days. And you didn't think about it. No. It's that innate intelligence that's running all of that in the background. And it's just like you said, you know, um, the less that it's interfered with, the better it's expressed and the better health that person's going to have. And, and I think that really leads us into the concept of law of cause and effect. You know, I mean, like so many people are still thinking about, you know, the genetics that I mentioned, like the DNA, you pull it out and stretch it to Jupiter. And that's what's determining your health. Right. But yet, you know, we know that that's not true and that there's this world of epigenetics. And so, you know, what is, that? What is, that, you know, what is epigenetics? I mean, what is that? Explain that. Well, you know, genetics is um, your DNA is what you're born with. But the world that you the environment that you put your genetics in. So inside of every cell, the environment that that cell, that DNA is housed in determines whether or not what genes are turned on and off. And so the world of epigenetics says that, you know, the DNA is constantly changing its shape and parameters to express certain genes based on the amount of physical, chemical and emotional stress that the body's under. And therefore, that's what's being expressed. And that, that determines more about the genetics than literally just the genes themselves. Right. That's the law of adaptation. Yeah. The body's constantly adapting to the environment that it's put in. So it's always trying, it's number one goal is homeostasis, Absolutely. survival, yeah. sleeping right here at all times. If it goes up, it needs to do something to bring it back down. It's always about balance. So if we're not balanced, how can we be healthy? You know, it's always, so if we have predispositions genetically to whatever familiar disease they say we have, mm -hmm. well, if you put those genes in an environment that causes them to turn on, they're gonna express disease. You take those same genes, take them out of that environment, put them into a healthier environment, they shut off and the disease process shuts down as well because it's no longer needed. Absolutely. It's not a survival tactic of the right. body to try to return to homeostasis. Right. I mean, our body's always trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And you, if you just start digging a little bit deeper than the one step that a lot of 
um, a lot of the medical community likes to do. So for example, heart disease, mm -hmm. we all blame cholesterol as the bad guy because there's cholesterol in the artery that blocked the artery. That's why you had a heart attack. It was the cholesterol's fault, but that's one way of looking at it. But you can also say, well, why is there cholesterol buildup? Well, there's always a reason. Go one more step and say, well, if you trust the body, you understand that the body's always trying to heal. Why is that putting cholesterol there? There's always a reason. Well, if you're, if you're eating too much sugar, toxic, you know, oils and all, have all this inflammation scraping and damaging those arteries, your body's like, oh, no, we're going to we're going to bleed out here in a minute. Let's put some waxy substance called cholesterol on there to patch it up while yeah. the guy makes better decisions. Well, if that guy never makes better decisions, it's going to constantly be put down, put down, put down and keep stacking on top of one another. Next thing you know, you have a blocked artery and the guy who opens up the heart and goes, oh, there's the cause. They're obviously going to say it was the cholesterol, not your poor choices over the last 20 or 30 years causing all this damage for your body to try to survive by putting the cholesterol down. Absolutely. You know, again, it's that law of cause and effect for every effect. There's a cause. And so, you know, the body was doing it on purpose. And, you know, we can apply that broad concept to health in general. We can apply it to the immune system. We can apply it to the uh, which so much the hot topic right now. But we can apply it to cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so every disease process has a cause. And again, we have to go back to that innate intelligence, which governs and runs our bodies and is constantly trying to make the best choice towards homeostasis. And what part of the body does it use to organize all of that? Hmm. Let's think about that for a moment. <laughs> God put the power in our brain. It's our electrical energy. It is our, we, we live here between our ears is where we are. Our body is just the robot that is controlled by the brain. Mm -hmm. And those messages have to come out the out the brain, down the spinal cord, out long nerves to control this body, these organs, these cells, these tissues. And as long as there's no interference, we have innate intelligence all throughout our body, uninterrupted 100% flow, which means that we are going to heal and function the way God designed us to heal and function. Absolutely. What happens if there's an interruption, Chad? Oh, man, then there's a breakdown in communication and it's like... Uh my iPhone at the top of Lookout Mountain, it just shuts down and I can't make a call or anything, you know, till I get close to coming to college. You know, it's a, a breakdown in communication means a breakdown in function, which means a breakdown in health. And, you know, that's. So, that's so Chad, we can, uh, this uh, brings me to a really good example of interference. I remember one of the first times I was trying to um, come and visit you when you first moved up to Lookout Mountain and I had a cell phone. And I'm calling you trying to get directions. You're like, okay, when you're on 24, get off Market Street, go up this way, take a left. And then as I'm going up the mountain, Chad, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So now I'm just driving along, but I'm not getting the information from you. I don't know how to get to where I need to go. And then every once in a while I hear, go straight, turn left on this road. Do you see a guest? I'm like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be right now. So I mean, imagine that is your body. Imagine your heart is getting that type of information, communication from the brain. It's not getting what it needs to function. How the heck are you supposed to fit? How are you supposed to heal? How are you supposed to function properly? That's it. Imagine 30 years of breaking up information on a cell phone. How are you ever going to get to where you're supposed to go? You're not. No. And not destination health anyway. That's you right. Might get to destination moderate or you might live to 60 but you're not going to live in a hundred in good health. No. And, but that's what we all want. And, and I think that this, we have to get again, law of cause and effect. And so living our lives intentionally and understanding where that real health comes from is the, is the key. Yep. And, and so that's what we do in max living. That's why I enjoy working um, so much with our group is, is that it's this group of people who are, totally dedicated to helping people reach their healing and health potential, their life potential. But so many people, excuse me here, let me, my throat's dry. So many people are absolutely captivated, especially right now in this debate between where really health comes from. And I, I think there's really two dominant theories out there that deserve discussion. And, and that's germ theory and the terrain theory. And, you know, 
my understanding, you know, I'll describe the germ theory first, and then I'll let you know, you, let's let you say some things here. Is is it that that the germ theory is all about the germ? It's about what's outside of you that's coming at you. Um, it's really introduces this concept of randomness, and it may be determined by your genetics, and things are really uncertain, and it's a fear-based thing, meaning that it's out of your control. And therefore, it's all just about the bug. And if you come in contact with the bug, I um, feel like that's a pretty fair description. I mean, that's the germ theory in a nutshell. I mean, live in fear. You have no control. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Why bother? And, you know, as studying as much immunology as I did in school and as much biology and microbiology and things, you know, we understand that, that that's not the whole concept, of course. That bug is it. It is what it is. And it's our body has to deal that with that as a stressor. But then there's the terrain theory that is more based on that we have control of our environment, our our host terrain, our soil, uh, that it's the law of our gen, our epigenetics and, and what we put our genetics in. Uh, and there's a certain amount of certainty and hope and faith in the fact that if I change my habits, um, I'll be healthier. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, if you go back and look up at the history of the germ theory, Louis Pasteur is the one who is the father of the germ theory, yeah. um, saying he said it was outside organisms that attack the body, and that's what caused disease. And what happened was um, medicine was actually grown out of that theory, because yeah. it's very easy for people to get that, that there's invisible organisms, that are going to attack you. And when they do, you need a drug to kill it. Mm -hmm. And you make a lot of money on that theory versus what you're explaining, which is called the terrain theory, which is interesting because Louis Pasteur on his deathbed, he revoked the germ theory. Because yeah. what he realized was it wasn't that germ that made people sick. It was a weakened environment that allowed the sickness to happen. Yeah. This is why two children in the same household eating the same food, exercising the same, breathing the same air. Why does one get sick and one doesn't get sick? One's, one, one of those, yeah, one of those children's environment, internal environment is not as strong as the other. So yes. our job is to help people understand you are in control of your environment. It is not luck. It is only based on your decisions and your decisions on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to strengthen your terrain. So one of the examples we've used in our makeovers before is you're driving down the road on the left side you see of the road, you see a beautiful green pasture. Beautiful, right? On the mm -hmm. right side, you see a garbage dump. What is attracted to the garbage dump? What, what, what do you see? Yeah. Flies, maggots, buzzards, right? Yeah. So you're looking and you say, well, I want that right side of the road to look a lot like the left side of the road. So I want to get rid of the buzzards and I want to get those guys out of there because those are pests. So mm -hmm. we could just sit there and poison them. We could shoot them. Come back the next day, what's going to happen? More flies eating the trash and also the dead flies. Yes. Yeah, so, so you got more flies, you got more rats, you got more buzzards. So you can just sit there all day and, and shoot them with what you want to call it guns, you want to call it medication, just trying to get rid of these pests. Or you can say, well, you know what? What if we just transplant them? What if we just move them all over to the other side of the road, to the green pasture? And you get you do all this work. They get over to the green pasture. The next day you come back. Where are they at now? They're back in the trash dump, man. Okay. So now we're starting to think a little bit more. We're going. Okay. Well, there's a cause to these guys. These guys aren't the problem. They're being attracted to this area for a reason. Why are they there? Well, what do we need to do to the trash, Chad? Hey, man. The only thing you can do is clean it up. Yeah, it's all you can do. You clean up that trash. They're no longer wanting to come there, and they find somebody else that's got a trash dump. Yeah, they're going. They're not stupid. They're not. They, they, are, they, 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 want they, eat. they just want something to eat. So that's the train theory in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You clean up your environment. You're no longer going to attract viruses and bacteria. And if you do, what is your body equipped to do with the immune system? It's equipped to kill it. Kill it. Squash it. Gone. Done. Absolutely. So this it's is why this is so important to think about right now that people that don't understand that concept right now are at home, they're living in fear. And I understand that, we get that. Sure. But at the same point, how much fear can you live with? It's not good for your immune system, it's not good for you. And who on the news is teaching you how to strengthen your terrain? 
Nobody. Nobody. If they really cared about our health, they'd be teaching yes. us how to be healthy, how to build up your immune system, how to strengthen your own environment so that, God forbid, this does come along, you're good. No fear. It, you know, like we're all – we're all probably going to at some point in time be exposed. And again, which one do you want to be? Do yeah. you want to be the one who gets it and, and has no symptoms or very mild or something? And maybe it feels like the flu or maybe it feels like something else akin to that. Or do you want to um, do you want you to be the person who has the massive impact due to your body's inability to adapt? It goes right back to that uh, law of cause and effect. It goes right back to homeostasis. And, and I look at this, you know, it's one of the things I was talking with uh, Dr. Gersten uh, earlier about, and um, is, is that, you know what, just like using the example of our blood, our blood, literally every living blood cell in our bodies will be brand new in 120 days. And that turnover in what those red blood cells are made of. And all of the factors of how well they perform are affected by our health. But they're all going to be brand new 120 days from now. Mm -hmm. That's why so many people, they'll go to the doctor, they'll get blood work that the doctor doesn't like. They say, go home and do this, whether it is, you know, changing your nutrition, getting more exercise, less stress, or whether it's just take this pill and then show back up. We'll redo your blood work. Well, what are they measuring, man? They're yep. measuring the response to what that intervention did yep. and your blood's brand new and they're going to see how well it worked. So with that same concept, 120 days from now, you can be a totally different person on your blood work on the inside. So what are you going to do in the next 120 days? Yeah. What do you, so what we need to start thinking about is how do we create green pastures inside of our body, clear yep. the trash stuff. So Chad, what do we need to do? to clean up the trash. Number one, we gotta make sure that everything's controlled and coordinated, right? And we've gotta have our body literally connected and in the, inter in the internet, our nerve system functioning at 100% so that each of our systems can control together to get rid of the trash. We can regenerate green grass instead of the trash dump. And that's the thing is like, people are like, you can heal from this, you can heal from that, the answer is, Absolutely. Yeah. You're supposed to heal from these things. And if somebody told you you need to be on this drug for the rest of your life, they didn't teach you what caused it in the first place. Exactly. If you lifestyle your way into that problem, you can lifestyle your way back out of that problem. The problem here is that most people don't want to put the effort in because it's so much easier just to pop a pill and be done instead of changing my diet, changing my exercise routine, detoxification, reading labels, going to a chiropractor, getting adjusted. You know, doing all the things we're supposed to do. You, but you know what? When you start doing the things we're supposed to do regularly, it becomes routine and it becomes your, okay, I'm going to say it, your new normal. Yeah. All right. That's the only new normal I'm accepting is that people are actually going to start taking care of their health. Absolutely. That's what I want for people to understand is, is that, you know, 120 days from now, you can have a completely different body mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just so designed to do so. And it's going to happen regardless. Yep. It's going to be either worse or better. Yeah. You know, like very little things stay the same. In life. Yep. One of the laws of the universe is change. Yep. So is it changing favorably for you or is it changing negatively? And what determines that are those five essentials that we talk about in Max Living so much. And, and that, that's the empowerment of the terrain theory and the understanding that we are in control of those five essentials. Yep. You know, and I tell my patients that every decision you make every day does one of two things, either improves your body's ability to heal or decreases it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Eat a salad. It's going to improve. Sit in your butt all day. It's going to go the wrong direction. Yeah. All right. You know, eat a burger from McDonald's is going to go the wrong direction. You know, just all the things that we do is either going to push you in the one way or the other way. So obviously we should be making more decisions to go up and not down. Make it go up and not down. So I tell my patients, my job is not, not to make these decisions for you. Yeah. My job is to help you make better decisions on a consistent basis so that you can give your body more of what it needs and less of what it doesn't. And when you do that, you're rewarded with better health. And I love it because, you know, one of the biggest 
concepts is, is that right now so many people are listening to other things that are um, keeping them out of the very things that we know um, cause 90% of uh, the disease in America. And that is the poor lifestyle choices. And, uh, and so they're, they're staying at home um, and they're not even while in their own home environment, which um, is controlled, uh, then they're not exercising. They're, they're having poor nutrition nutrition choices. They're not getting out to go get adjusted and they're not drinking enough water and they're not, and they're doing so many of the choices that over a long period of time uh, accumulate a, poor, a worse body. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I think is so amazing about our offices is, is that, you know, we, we create these environments where people are thriving. They're showing up to be surrounded by other people that are getting better health. They're experiencing better things. And um, I think that that's another amazing part of what we do on a daily basis. I agree. I agree. So, Chad, let's go back to the nervous system. We talked about how the nervous system controls everything without interference. How do you know if there's interference in your nervous system? Like, how do you oh. figure that out? Well, the only way is to get an exam and to get some x-rays done. You know, uh, you got to have a chiropractic exam. You got to have some x-rays done and you got to be measuring what's going on. And, um, and that's the only way I know. Of. Well, what if you don't have any pain? Like what if I don't have, you know, I always been, like, these are things I hear. I, you, if you go to a chiropractor, that means you have a bad back and mm -hmm. you only go to the chiropractor if you had an accident, if you have back pain, neck pain or headaches. Is that true? No, uh, the only reason to go to a chiropractor is that you want to actually be as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Okay? It's the only criteria I have. You got to have a pulse. Um, you you got to be alive. Um, and, and, and then you've got to have the desire to yeah. be your best um, in, or, you know, it, whatever function that is to you right now, you know, yep. Um, yep. you know, so we, you need to want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my, you know, my mottos in my office is you need to choose to live better. It is a choice to live better. If you're not happy with where you are right now because of your health, that's a choice. Mm -hmm. And you have, at any moment, you can make a better choice. Absolutely. So you need to make that choice to live better. And if you need our help, that's what I'm here for. That's what Dr. McDill is here for. That's what Max Living is here for. We go to maxliving.com. You can find doctor's offices all across the United States that are here to help you make better decisions. Whether it comes to, you know, let's get the nervous system functioning first. Then what else we need to do, Chad? We need to eat better, right? We need to read ingredient labels, not nutrition facts. I want to know what's in my food. So we don't teach diets in our office. We teach nutrition plants. We yep. teach principles on how to use better, healthier quality ingredients so that you can actually build health, not destroy it when you're eating your food. What, yeah. else, what else we need to do? Man, you know, I, it's just that constant understanding of the law of cause and effect. And that, it, it, you know, we just understand that if I am in a certain place, and I need to exercise, you know, that's a component. It's not a maybe, it's a requirement. The body needs oxygen and it needs to be able to um, be able to distribute oxygen and nutrients to every part of your body. So you've got to be exercising a certain amount um, um, properly for you at your stage of life. And then we need to be empowering people with the knowledge of how to help the body's detoxification systems um, get rid of the junk, the garbage heat, and, and understanding that there's certain key factors like how the skin helps us detox and, you know, where a lot of our toxins are coming from, from our nutrition, from our water, from our cosmetic products and have them empowered with the resources that, again, um, things like Beauty Counter and other con you know, places that are empowering them to minimize the bad stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. And it, right now it's this, this tone of all of this determines also how your immune system functions. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the ability of your body to have enough reserves in the gas tank to and the healthy enough terrain to fight off and not allow this virus to get a niche inside. Yeah. Of yeah. And that's, you know, and those are four out of the five essentials. And the, the one essential that I feel like is above and beyond all the other four essentials, because without that one, nothing else matters is max mindset. Yeah. And we've been talking about that from the second we started here today. Yeah. You understand that you are your normal state of health is that of health. So your normal state is a state of health, meaning that you are supposed to be healthy. Yes. And your body can heal itself. All you got to do is help it heal itself. That's a whole different ballgame than sitting back and hoping for the best and 
you know, woe is me if I get sick or I'm overweight or I have heart disease. It's like, just make better choices and we can help you with that. And you're going to get healthy again. Once, yeah. yeah, that's that's the why. And then we can teach you the how. Absolutely. The how and, and that is, that's really it. You know, right now, I think that so many people are really frustrated with not only uh, the situation that we've been in, you know, spiritually and economically and health wise, and people are starting to, you know, want to get started with the recovery, not only for themselves, but for the nation. And, and I really think that it's a, it's a time to get rid of the laziness and get involved, that it's a time to commit to um, that new you that, uh, you know, it's a time to have more faith and to kind of rise up and say, you know what, I'm going to believe in myself and have faith in the knowledge that um, if I have better habits, I have better health. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, implement. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that's it. I was say, you know, what step one is to all that. Shut off the news. Shut off social media. You shut those two things down, you'll be amazed how much brighter your day will be. Absolutely. Yep. Step two, pick a phone number. You can, if it's if you're listening to this, you're listening to it, and you, you need to say, the concept isn't, well, am I, I'm already a patient at Dr. Moss's office, or I'm already a patient at Dr. McDill's office. The questions become, well, how involved are you, and how many of your family members and church members and everything else? We've got to, if you're, we're shutting off social media and we're shutting down these other conversations, the idea is, what are we replacing that with? And we need to be replacing it with better habits, better conversations. More people need to know what we're talking about today. That's why we want to share these, you know, these you know, TV shows and why we want to put it on Facebook and YouTube. I do this with my family. I know you do this with yours because yep. we go on vacation together and we're always, you know, we see each other and watch our, watch your kids grow up so healthy and happy and whole. And, and, and it's just this amazing thing to see, but yet so many people don't know that this is the choice and it is. They don't even know it's an option. That's it. That's the thing. And that's why I tell my patients, listen, I know you know people that need to hear this. Mm -hmm. It's not about them getting the care. It's yeah. about them hearing that there's an option other than having to go to the doctor when they're sick, taking medication, vaccination, and living in fear. Okay. Those, that's an option. But if they, the doctors are not going to tell them that there's any other option. That's your job. As a patient, you're on a mission with us to help Max Living change healthcare. We need to tell every single person that we know to go visit a Max Living office, come to one of our dinners, come to one of our seminars. Heck, just stop in and chat with a doctor because I know any doctor would take time out of their day to have a chat with a patient or somebody just wants to know more about what we do because we are here to change people's lives, to change our community and change health healthcare over the entire world. I mean, we need more people to at least know this and if they don't want to choose this, that's fine. At least they got a choice. That's it. Everybody deserves a choice, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and part of that is your health and um, the freedom to make those choices. So um, we've, we've run out of time. Um, I hope everybody has been, I know I've been excited to get to chat with you and, yeah. and, and, and have this conversation. And I, I think so many people, um, this is something to be shared, liked, and, and just um, spread the message. And we look forward to seeing you here again on Health of Second Opinion. And I uh, hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day. Thanks for tuning in with me, man. Yeah, thank you, man. It's always a good time. All right. See you, Chad.